Hello, Parasites. This is Ben Pronsky. I'm the voice of Eddie Brock and Venom in Marvel Spider-Man Maximum Venom. And you're watching the Venom Vlog. Enjoy. <laughs> we are Venom! We are Venom! Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today for episode 575, we're going to discuss the final episode, the big finale of Maximum Venom. This is the Spider-Man or Marvel Spider-Man from Disney XD. This is their third season, possibly their final season. People ask me all the time. I noticed lately there's been a lot of comments in previous videos that I've uploaded where I interviewed, uh, you know, Chris Doc Wyatt and Kevin Burke, who are, you know, some of the guys who are in charge of the show. And to some degree, especially creatively and stuff and on a producer level and creative level and writing level and stuff like that. And, and, uh, and so, you know, ever since that interview went up, it started gaining traction. And a lot of people that comment on there are usually asking me, hey, is there going to be a season four? And I think I even asked that question in the interview, but I don't know if I ever got a direct answer. And I would assume, though, uh, at least my assumption, I have no idea what the answer is. Uh, of course, I hope there's a season four because I noticed there's a lot of fans of this show that have been like, you know, coming up that, uh, you know, when, when I first started talking about the show, it seemed like a lot of people were kind of haters of it. And then as I was talking more about it, it seemed like more fans of it came out of the woodworks and commented on my video. So I'm glad there are fans out there and I hope that there's a season four for you fans. But if I'm being realistic, I feel like there's not going to be a season four. I think they interviewed the the actor who plays Spider-Man in the show recently, and they asked him if there'd be a season four. And he said he said the same thing I'm saying. He's like, I don't know because I haven't been you know contacted about it. He goes, so as far as I know, you know, there's no plans. He goes, but you know, I have no idea. Uh, and so I figure, well, if the the main actor doesn't know, he's going to be on the show. And especially when the show they start it so far in advance, because as we know from you know Chris and uh, Kevin's interview that I did with them. They say when they work on shows, it's usually two years before the episodes air, um, and they think it's kind of funny, and I do too, when fans will be like, hey, here's a suggestion, do this in the next episode, and then it happens, and people go, yay, they listened to my suggestion. It's like, no, they made the episode two years ago, so they, they really didn't get you know a lot of input on it uh, because no one saw the you know any version of it. Uh, or any major version of it until it aired on TV, you know, for the most part. And that was two years after they wrote it and, you know, and all that stuff. And sure, they'll bring people in for ADR and stuff. But if the actor of the show isn't already talking about season four, then I'm going to guess there isn't going to be a season four. I know that may be bad news for a lot of people. Um, but like I said, uh, Sony has his big plans with Phil Lord and Chris Miller about doing, um, you know, Spider-Verse stuff, Spider-Man related cartoons uh, that are built into the Spider-Verse universe. And I have no doubt that will probably be the thing that takes over this and replaces this show if this is the final season. I'm going to guess we're going to probably get, you know, some kind of Miles show maybe or um, Spider-Gwen or something like that. And I'm totally fine with that because we've had now two cartoons in a row that have had multiple spider people in it. And I kind of want to get those characters back to basics where there's not just a whole team of spider people. That's great. It's a great concept, but I don't want people to burn out on that. Um, so I'd like them to get back to personal stories where you tell stories set in spider Gwen's universe or stories set in Miles' universe that don't have the other spider characters in it. Um, maybe even a Spider-Man 2099 cartoon. That would be freaking amazing. I hope they do that uh, big time. So uh, we'll see. We'll see where the landscape of cartoons go. But I just wanted to briefly talk about that before we get into this discussion is that um, there are fans out there that want another season and I'm just not sure we're going to get it. And I think that's okay because I agree with the actor who plays Spider-Man when he said in the interview that he thinks this is a pretty good send-off. They do spend the last like two, three minutes of this episode kind of wrapping things up the best they can without like feeling like they're forcing a wrap-up, uh, but also giving you hope that these characters are going to hopefully go off into a brighter future and um and you know in a, in a in a direction that we've not really seen in comics or animation before which is kind of the frustrating part too because now i i want to see a season four um not that i didn't before but where this episode ends i'm kind of like oh where could they go from here like that sounds neat uh, the direction with all these characters uh but we're not going to get that unfortunately so um, so that's what, you know, I don't want to spoil that right away. I'll just say if you don't want spoilers and you want to, you know, just go watch the episode yourself, go check it out. Uh, if you haven't seen this series at all, it will be airing on Disney X or it's on Disney XD now and on the Disney app and stuff like that. You can watch it if you have cable and stuff. But if you want to watch the whole show in its entirety and you haven't seen it yet, it will be going to Disney Plus uh, towards the end of the year in November. I think the week of Thanksgiving even um, it'll be there on, on Disney Plus. So you can check it out there. All 
all six one hour episodes, um, which I think will probably be about 40 minute episodes when they, you know, put them up on there because they won't have commercials and stuff. So, uh, so, all right. So let's dive into this real quick. I don't have a ton to say um, really to die as far as a deep dive into this. Uh, I did like the episode overall. Um, I thought it was much stronger than the last episode as far as pacing and things like that. And I remember when I saw the teaser for this and we saw like, you know, Venom on another planet with Spider-Man. And then they had like, you know, Spider-Gwen and Miles and everyone fighting the, you know, and, and uh, Aranya, I think fighting the sisters, you know, the symbiote sisters. I was just like, oh my God, this seems like so many stories are going to juggle. Like, uh, you know, it just seems like a lot for a final episode. I felt like they did a pretty good job. Although, you know, it, it, it is rushed in some way, but not like in a, in a way where I'm like, okay, well, this is definitely like, it's rushed for kids so they kids can keep up with it and stuff. But it's not like, um, you know, well structured as far as like, you know, what I would have liked to see. And like this felt like, oh, I could make two episodes out of this, you know, and not not to drag it out, but like to really get to the meat of some of these characters and, and really flesh out their arcs and kind of the the purpose of it. Um, I think that's the one thing this season is like we have so many loose ends with Miles' dad and all these other things. And they try to touch on that at the beginning of this episode where Harry, Miles, and Peter are hanging out in a coffee shop uh, talking. I think the coffee shop's even named after someone who's worked in comic books before. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I just remember I was like, N note that. And then I noted it, but I don't remember the details. Um, but I think there was even a reference there. I think it was called a Cup of Joe, maybe. Uh, maybe that was a Joe Casada reference. I can't remember, honestly. So, um, so anyway, so the the episode has you know all those characters kind of uh, picking up where the last episode left off uh, max Modell is back at horizon he's in charge of the school again and all the kids go to the school and all that stuff and uh, and then peter's starting to build his relationship with mary jane finally on the last episode uh there's a lot of mary jane in this episode which i was like yay uh because i felt like in episode three i thought that was a strong episode but that was right after we got introduced to Mary Jane, and I was kind of wondering where she was during the symbiote invasion. So in this storyline, we get to see kind of a you know a story with Mary Jane during an invasion, kind of. But uh, the main the invasion is not there. There's not like millions of symbiotes descending on Earth or anything like that, like it was last time. It's just three symbiotes and the return of Venom. And the return of Venom thing, it's it's funny because it made me think a little bit of um, Lex Luthor in uh, the Justice League cartoon when it was revealed that he was half Brainiac. Um, that's what happens in this. And again, we're going to get into spoilers. So if you don't want them, you turn away now, go watch the episode. Uh, but in this one, you find out that Max Modell has been Venom for a while. There was a, you know, after the seed got destroyed, um, or not the seed get destroyed, but after Venom got destroyed, uh, in the first episode of this season, a little sliver of him, I guess, stayed on the, uh, the seed. So when Peter or as Spider-Man gave the seed back to Max and brought it back to Horizon, that little sliver went into Max's blood. And now what's funny about that is I'm like, well, wouldn't that kind of make Carnage in a way? Because uh, Carnage was an offspring of Venom, obviously, that went into, you know, a wound on Cletus Cassidy and bonded with them on a cellular level. Uh, it's hard for me to say. And, uh, and it, you know, bonded with them. And that's why he kind of has that red look to him, too. It's because he's like red and black, like blood can be like, a, you know, a coagulated blood and regular blood, I guess, uh, or blood when it hits oxygen. And, you know, it's like red and black. It looks really cool. You know, Carnage, obviously. So um, so I was like, oh, maybe that could have been a cool way for them to do Carnage. But of course, the show is called Maximum Venom and you want to bring that back. But what I didn't like was that there was this, this really cheesy line um, and I, it never dawned on me, you know, because I, it was it's so bad that it made me roll my I actually rolled my eyes watching this episode on this part where uh Max Modell reveals himself to be Venom and Spider-Man's like what and he goes you know how is this possible and then you know Venom tells him his supervillain speech and explains how he's still there and then he says uh he's like yes he's like we have bonded with Max Modell we are now Maximum Venom and I was like oh my god like even for a kid show I was like ah that's oh it's borderline cringe <laughs> it's like it was so bad like not good cheesy bad like i was just like oh my god max model maximum venom i'm like please no um but other than that like that was the only real uh hurdle that uh my eyes had to you know roll around during this episode because for the most part the rest of it was fine it was um grady had a lot to do in it which was fine because i liked grady I, I actually think he's been a fun addition to the show because he's like this annoying 
overweight kid, but he has a crush on Gwen, uh, which, you know, I guess you can't always do the Gwen Miles uh, interest story because they did that in the comics and they did that in the Spider-Verse movie. So I guess in this one, they didn't want to do that. But I guess that it, that's so typical Disney where they don't want like um, a lot of interracial couples um, on their shows or in their movies like Ray and, and Finn. Like they, they was like, oh, there's a love interest in the first Star Wars. And then after that, they're like, no, we got to give Finn a, a a girlfriend who also has a different ethnic background. She can't be white. Uh, and then in the third movie, they're like, oh, we got to undo that too. And you're just like, like, I don't know. It's just like Disney has this weird, the execs, it feels like they have this weird trigger they can't pull where it's like, who cares? Like, who cares if Miles, and, like Sony did it, you know, and, and the comic books did it. But I guess it's like, oh, we want to do something different. So Miles, they have this big prom and uh, and so they all pair up. So Miles goes with um, Aranya, I think is her name. Um, I'm always blanking on on that girl's name because, like, I I'm, I know I watch the show, but I'm still like sometimes I just get confused because there's so many Spider Women characters in the comics, and I just kind of they you know some of them just kind of all blend together as far as like separating them because sometimes it's like oh this one's wearing this one's costume and and I get mixed up. So I always I always uh, uh, butcher that poor character's name, so hopefully I'm not screwing that up. Um, but she, uh, you know, hooks up with Miles as far as prom dates go. Uh, and then Grady, you know, asks Gwen out. So again, you have like a, a white and, you know, like a, a Caucasian couple. And then uh, Peter asks Mary Jane out. And so again, you have a Caucasian couple there. And it's not like that's a, a big deal, but it's just, it's always funny that it's like Sony just has, uh, not Sony, but Disney has this problem sometimes where they just, they can't pull the trigger on that no matter what. And it's, it may just be coincidence, but it's a lot of coincidences uh, between different departments at Disney from animation to, to movies and stuff. It's like, there's just, they, they, they can't seem to do it. Um, so, uh, so I don't know, they, or they struggle with it. They can do it. I've seen, you know, it's in some Disney stuff, but it's not, not always the case and mostly not the case. Um, so anyway, so they all pair up, they go to prom, uh, while they're searching for Venom, I thought that was kind of funny, they're like, well, let's, you know, we have a tracker for Venom, so we'll just go to prom, and, um, and just, we'll worry, you know, we'll worry about Venom when he shows up on the tracker, and you're just kind of like, uh, okay, maybe be a little bit more proactive, but that's kind of the point of this episode, too, is that by the end, Peter learns to be more proactive, and that's why he actually turns down an offer that Iron Man gives him at the beginning of this episode when they take down MODOK. Uh, so they, they squeeze in a MODOK battle, which is fun because my friend Jordan uh, Bloom, who's working on the uh, MODOK cartoon with uh, Patton Oswalt and stuff, that show will be coming out soon. So it was cool to see a MODOK fight at least. And Spider-Man tracked MODOK and, fa and found a way to beat him, um, you know, and the, where, where the, you know, Tony Stark and the Avengers couldn't. So, uh, so they bring that up. They're like, Tony, why didn't you think of this? And he's like, oh, the kid's smart. What do you want from me? Um, so I kind of like that, that Peter outshined Tony in the brains department, which is kind of nice. So that has Tony say, hey, you're going to prom. You're going to be graduating from uh, Horizon Lab soon or Horizon School or whatever it is. He's like, um, you're going to, you know, maybe you want to be a Avenger. And Peter's like, really? And he's like, yeah, come on, kid. He's like, uh, you, you'll be an, you're an adult now. He's like, let's do this. Uh, come join the Avengers and uh, we'd love to have you. You can live in the, you know, Stark penthouse or, you know, Avengers Tower or whatever. And so Spider-Man's like, yeah, that's a great offer. Thank you. So like the movies, you know, Homecoming, at the end of the episode, he does turn down that offer because he works with his friends, Miles and, and Gwen and, and uh, Rania, and like they together save the world again. And they fight against Max Modell, who's now Venom. And Venom, using Max Modell, living dormant in him uh, all these time, all this time, and building and growing and rebuilding its you know full symbiote self and healing, it's now taken over Max, but bonded with him on a level that Carnage is bonded with Cletus Cassidy. It's like you know uh, in their in his blood and stuff. So he uses Max's brain because he can control Max uh, now because he's you know there there was a sliver of him in the beginning, but now he's a full symbiote again. And so he can control Max and get Max to do whatever he wants. And he has access to Max's memories and mind. Um, and so he uses that to create a doorway or a stargate that leads back to Clintar, assuming, you know, presumably Clintar. I think we still don't know when in the comic or the cartoon universe this takes place because Clintar was, you know, blown up, I think by Groot and the Guardians of the Galaxy in one episode or Rocket and Groot. Um, so we don't really know if that's the case, and they don't really say it's Clintar. They just say it's a, a, a planet of symbiotes, uh, basically. They don't really say it's Clintar, but there's no real symbiotes on it. It's just the sisters. So if we're going off that little animated movie thing that they put out, I guess uh, Scream, Scorn, and Mania, 
um, who all show up. They're bonded to, um, their symbiote's bonded to a specific life form, not human, so it's not like Andy Benton or Donna Diego as Scream or any of those. It's They're bonded to other life forms, one of which, uh, Scorn, is bonded, that symbiote is bonded to a, a being that can shapeshift, because at one point they use that ability to trick Grady and Mary Jane into giving it the seed, because they it made it look like uh, Scorn was Spider-Man, and was like, give me the seed, and they give the seed, and then it shapeshifts back into Scorn, it's like, thanks, suckers. And runs away and and so i kind of like that and actually i think the three girls who do the voices of the the symbiote sisters also work on another show together for disney called zombies i think and that's pretty typical uh synergy wise for disney i've worked for disney and disney tv for years and they'll typically do that they'll be like hey you're in you know you're in the recording booth to record this one thing are you working on this other show like hey why don't we get you you know over here so we can maybe bring your fan base over to watch this episode of spider-man and so they put out this like little behind the scenes you know, video online on their website at Marvel HQ. I'll put a link to it down below. There's like this little behind the scenes where they interview the three girls and they and they each talk about their roles and what they wanted to bring to the role um, based off what the script was. And, and I thought that was kind of neat because they all had a different approach. You know, the girl who played Scream, uh, Meg Donnelly, which is, you know, my last name's Donnelly, uh, she actually was like talking about how Scream is the leader. And when Venom is like, hey, uh, let, all right, sisters, now that you're here, I brought you through the Stargate you know, help me destroy the planet. Because this time they're not trying to invade it or anything. They just want to wipe it out. They hate it now. They just hate Earth altogether. And it's ruined all their plans. And it wiped out most of the Clintars, uh, you know, race. So they're just like, screw it. Let's just kill these humans now. So uh, Scream's like, no, I don't take orders from you, little brother. Uh, because, you know, these are the four children of uh, Null, who was mentioned in that little animated short. But he does not appear in this episode like a lot of us thought he might. Um, so, so, yeah. And again, that's probably why... You know, some people want a season four, so maybe they can do a null thing at some point. But now there's no real symbiotes because at the end of this episode, uh, they all kind of get wiped out. Uh, you know, Scream, Scorn, and uh, and, uh, and Mania, and also Venom, they all get kind of wiped out. And Spider-Man tries to appeal to Max Modell and goes inside, even bonds with the symbiote again. And, the you know, the symbiote's like, I can't have two hosts. Like, get out of here, Spider-Man. And it's like, no, not until I reach Max. And, you know, Spider-Man inspires Max to, uh, you know, to... I guess, fight back against Venom and, you know, use Venom and use his strength. So that's what happens at the end is Max is like, now I'm, in, in, you know, in control and I'm going to use your strength. Whereas you used my mind to create these weapons, I'm going to use your body to destroy them. And so, uh, but before that happens, you know, Scorn is fighting uh, with Scream and Mania. They're fighting the th other three spider people while Spider-Man follows Venom through the Stargate onto this weird alien planet and that's where venom awakens this planet killer beast this giant dragon the dragon of clintar or whatever so you can kind of say that's like a nod towards the grendel i guess in a way but it totally doesn't look like the grendel at all it's totally alien looking and it's got like a mouth that opens like the predator almost but it's got a, a third like a venus flytrap mouth or something and there's venus flytrap symbiote things on this planet too so uh it's kind of neat it was i was like oh it's cool it's a nice little segment of the episode where they go to this other planet and you get to see um this other way of life and uh and now like spider-man's gravity is intensified so it's he's like oh that that makes me hulk strong if i push off something you know i weigh more and i can that i can put more into a punch but it's still not enough to to stop venom because venom also is you know a little heightened in in that department in this planet and plus he still has the spider-man's powers and then he has max Manel's brain so you know it's he's not really a competition like venom's winning throughout most of this episode um so he takes, uh, Venom takes the, the planet killer dragon thing back to Earth. And so, again, we have this big battle in, you know, on Earth in New York where things are blowing up. The Avengers are nowhere to be found. Um, and Spider-Man and his friends are taking it all on their own. But what I also like is that Grady and Mary Jane, they, they're like, hey, our, our prom dates are still inside. Because when this all happened, obviously, Gwen and Peter stayed behind to become their superhero identities to fight back against the symbiotes. And uh, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, what happened to Peter? And he's like, you know, Grady's like, I don't know. What happened to Gwen? And uh, Mary Jean's like, I don't know. And she's like, they're probably still inside, you know, uh, stuck in there, you know, because it's a lockdown. So Grady's like, don't worry, I can hack in. And so he gets them in. They use the little bloop bloop robot thing that uh, Grady likes to team up with. And the three of them go and uh, try to take the seed back. Uh, but of course, like I said, they get tricked. The seed ends up back in the hands of the symbiote sisters. And uh, they try to activate it to wipe out the planet. And they start to. And they give the seed to the dragon. And the dragon eats it. And then shoots out a big beam. And it's starting to you know, destroy parts of the city and stuff. And then that's when uh, Max Modell, you know, Spider-Man reaches Max. Max turns 
you know, gets control of the symbiote, of the Venom symbiote, and uses it to, like, fight back. And he destroys the dragon, destroys the seed, and once the seed is, is destroyed, all traces of symbiotes, I guess, throughout the galaxy are wiped out. Because, um, you know, Venom and the sisters aren't really too close to each other at this point. They're in the, they're in the same city, obviously, but they're not, like, right next to each other. At least I don't remember them being right next to each other. And the dragon gets evaporated. The symbiotes um, get evaporated. Yet, I think the alien life forms that the symbiotes were still bonded to still existed somehow so they don't really touch on that because they you know scorn wipes away and then you see like a husk of something or something drops like a body like so i don't know if it's an alien that's still alive that can shape shift or, or what i have no idea uh they kind of just let that go for for a minute um or maybe they, maybe they didn't have hosts i don't know i just put it you know maybe it's just scorn just has the ability to shape shift uh, but i thought it was on the body of something that could shape shift so i don't know i could be reading that wrong uh, or remembering that wrong but, uh, but at the end, they save the day, obviously. And so Tony Stark offers Peter, uh, you know, hey, you want to be an Avenger? And Peter's like, no, I think I'm just going to hang out with my friends and we're going to do something better because uh, Horizon Labs has been destroyed. But we want to keep the spirit of Horizon going because Max is like, look, I'm not rebuilding the school. And I don't blame him. I mean, this guy has been a puppet to most of the villains this season. And almost at a point where it's ridiculous, actually. That was the other negative I have of this episode, is that it's just like, oh my god, it's one thing after another with this school. It's so... It, I understand it's a, it's a comic book kind of story. It's got to be dramatic and all these things, but it's like even Spider-Man didn't even have this many problems at Midtown when he went to Midtown High. Uh, it wasn't like every single thing happened at the school. And that's what it was. This Horizon was like the cause of a lot of the problems that these kids had to face in the show. And it, it felt like this um, Ouroboros, like this self-eating worm thing where it was just like, you guys are going to keep making science projects that go out of hand or attract aliens or do something bad. And you're just going to keep ruining things and you're going to have to fight the things that you helped bring here in the first place. And it just kind of got annoying, like, uh, you know, to an extent. So this season, especially, which is like alien invasion, OK, now, or venom thing and then alien invasion. And OK, now it's a dragon alien invasion thing. And it's just like one thing after the other. And it, it all of it coming from Horizon to an extent and involving Max and everything. And I'm just like, yeah, good. Max Modell is kind of an idiot in this world. And he you know, he's not written as. Um, at least when you, when I look at this whole season, I'm like, he's he really is bad at what he does. He's he doesn't have, and I know he was puppeted by Venom, you know, and stuff like that. I get it this time around, but still, it's like, how many things can this guy be responsible for and not take really any accountability for it? And I know he tried to, and he, he tried to, you know, give up at one point. But like I said, they didn't write it that way. They, they you know, they wrote it to where he's like, you know what, I'm I'm guilty. I, I put you guys in harm's way, and I'm like, yes, you did. That's good. This is the path of redemption. So for him to take the job back, I'm like, that's not the path of redemption. Like, you, you were right the first time. You should have walked away from this. Even if you were played by villains, whatever, you are, you're a person of power, and you can't have that power. You, you, you're not good with it, Max. Um, you know, whereas Spider-Man's Spider really responsible, tries to be with his powers. I don't, Max isn't very good at it when I look at him throughout the season. I just, I'm like, I really liked Max in the comic books. And I kind of liked him at the start of this show as a mentor type for Peter. But by the end of the season, he's one of my least favorite characters on the show. Um, so I like that he's gone and Horizon's not coming back. But I do like that, you know, Peter is like, hey, let's let's not make the mistakes of Horizon. I'm not going to join the Avengers, but I made a proposition to Tony Stark that maybe he could fund us. And we're going to create Web, which is going to be a group of us, you know, all of us spider people and Grady. And uh, I think, yeah, Grady's joining and Harry Osborn. And he's like, let's get all of us together. And let's like keep the spirit of Horizon going, but it'll be an actual workplace. So it's basically like all these tech nerdy kids creating a startup at the end. And I'm like, that's actually kind of neat. I mean, I, I still feel like they're going to repeat the sins of the past because, you know, it's like, oh, if this show gets another season, I feel like most of the problems they're going to run into is going to be things that they create at their own lab and they're just going to be Horizon 2.0. Um, I hope that's not the case if the show does get another season. I hope they, you know, go more external with the villains and stuff and uh, and where the villains come from. Um, you know, I th that would just be better. You know, I, I just don't like, you know, I just don't like that, that they're constantly creating their own things that they got to clean up. It, it just gets old and boring after a while. And it makes them seem like real a-holes. <laughs> like it makes them seem like... Like uh, they're more of a threat to New York than, you know, than the villains are because they're the ones bringing the villains or, or, and stuff. So so I, I hope that changes if they do come back for a fourth season. But 
for the most part, I mean, you know, I do like that concept and I like it so much that I, I would be interested to see where it goes. Kind of like how, you know, Spider-Man Far From Home, I, I, that movie was mad to me. It was okay. It was better than Homecoming, I thought. Uh, but I think it was mainly because, I mean, I loved, my favorite thing at Homecoming was the villain, you know, Vulture, uh, Michael Keaton. Same thing with uh, Mysterio. He was my favorite part, Jake Gyllenhaal of Far From Home. But the ending is what made me like remember Far From Home because I forget. I'm like, what happened in Homecoming? Like, I'm, you know, I'm like, I don't remember those movies. They're so kind of bland in a lot of ways for me. Um, so, uh, so to me, I was like, oh, that ending where they reveal Peter's identity to the world. That's great. I can't wait to see where that goes. That's how I feel here. Oh my God, all these kids are gonna do their own startup business. Like, um, that's kind of neat. I actually kind of would like to see where that goes from here and what they'll create to combat current villains, you know, and how they'll uh, prevent themselves from going down the Max Modell path of just creating, you know, more problems. And I'm like, that could be interesting stories, but we get it at the end here, which is kind of like, oh, that sucks. So that's kind of why I want them there to be another season is for that reason alone. Or maybe they continue it in a comic book or something, you know, that's fine too. But, uh, but they do kind of give the show closure. You know, you don't see any Aunt May in this episode, which is eh, kind of a bummer. I'm an Aunt May fan, but, uh, but I, you do get a lot of Peter and, and Mary Jane, which I liked. And they actually, at the end, you know, uh, it seems like they're going to build a relationship together. And it seems like there's a happy ending for these characters. So I could understand if this is the finale. I got to say, it wasn't as crammed as I thought it was going to be based off of, you know, just wondering how are they going to, what are they going to do to wrap this show up? They didn't wrap everything up that you probably wanted to for a series finale, but I think it's close enough to where it's like, eh, it's it's fine. You know, like you can always revisit this universe one day in a Spider-Verse type scenario where they check in on these characters. Um, I think that's the big thing that now, you know, because nostalgia sells and stuff, that's the thing nowadays that Hollywood's realizing is, wow, if we do a multiverse, we can revisit any of these things. I mean, that was shown really well with the Spider-Verse movie, uh, not in sales, unfortunately, but it did win an Academy Award. But I think now that that concept is getting out there more, it's going to, you know, that's going to be the thing uh, Hollywood focuses on moving forward here on out. Like, for example, the DC TV shows, they did that really well by bringing back Burt Ward and, you know, the Smallville cast and all this stuff. And by doing that, that nostalgia sold and it got those ratings really solid on those episodes. And people liked it. They liked, hey, that was the Superman I grew up with. And, oh, this is the, the you know, the, the Batman I grew up with or whatever. Uh, Kevin Conroy's in the episode. And that stuff sells, you know, it's, it, it's a good business thing. So if you can come up with a good creative way to do that business thing, it could work. So again, if this is the end of this show, it's never goodbye. Maybe one day we'll get a revisit of it through a Spider-Verse related storyline or something, uh, which could be cool. So um, anyway, this episode, you know, not my favorite this season. I think the first episode I really liked uh, the most. <laughs> and actually episode three was a lot of fun because we got the actual symbiote invasion. But um but yeah, I mean, beyond that, like two was okay, but I saw the point of two. And then four and five were just kind of meh episodes to me. And this was meh as far as a as an episode goes in some regards, but it had enough symbiote stuff in it to where I was interested. But they, you didn't really get a ton of backstory. If you didn't watch that little short film, you wouldn't really understand, like Scream and Scorn and Mania would just be like three random villains of the week. And that's kind of sucks, you know? <laughs> like, I'm like, oh man, I would actually like backstory on these characters. And it's weird that we got the backstory, but on a YouTube video that ties into the show, which I guess, you know, oh, we want to do mixed marketing stuff or, you know, mixed media stuff or different avenues for information to get to our fans. But probably not everyone watched that YouTube episode, which is a shame. If you haven't, go to Marvel HQ and check out the history of like Venom and the symbiotes. That's a really cool short, like 12 minute animated movie that they put out there that kind of explains the backstory on Null and Venom and his sisters. Um, but it's a shame, you know, you didn't get it in this episode. I, I kind of, I always rail against ideas like that. It's like, if you're going to put an idea, if you're going to do a show, put all your ideas in the show. And then the, uh, the, the little supplemental stuff should be that. It should be add-on bonus side quest stuff, you know, like not nothing that is a revelation. And that's the thing is that that little short was a revelation to the, the origins of all these characters. And I think that could have been best suited, sprinkled out throughout this season, um, in the show, you know, like, I don't know, it could have just been done a little bit, a little bit better. And uh, maybe hindsight's 2020, of course, and maybe limitations, like people don't realize that when you make a show, you do have limitations from, you know, the higher ups and, and things like that. But um, for me, I just felt like the season overall, 
if it's really named Maximum Venom because Maximum Venom becomes Venom, that's goofy, and I, I want to roll my eyes at that even more now. Um, but uh, but I know it's also because Maximum Carnage, it's, you know, they're just aping off that to, uh, kind of. But I, I just I was just kind of mad. Like oh, overall, there's enough in the season to where I'm like, okay, I liked it. I'm not. I didn't feel like I wasted my time, and I felt like a lot of hard work was put into it to trying to structure this thing. Because um, I imagine like. You know, I heard that at the, you know, when I asked that question, I think uh, recently someone on Twitter, I went back to Twitter to check a message. I have a friend in the hospital right now and he was writing me on Twitter and I didn't see the messages until I checked my old email and I saw, hey, you got messages on Twitter and it was from him from the hospital. And I'm like, oh man, he must not have my email or my phone number. So let me go on Twitter and, uh, and you know, check it real quick. And when I did, I got tagged by uh, Bizarnage from Venom site, um, who I'm going to try to get him on a podcast at some point too, if I can. But uh he tagged me in something and said, man, I was going back watching, uh, you know, Seek's old episodes and I got to episode 400 and I noticed that he went to D23 and he got to ask one question to the uh, panel of Maximum Venom people. And it was, um, you know, the, which is how I met Kevin and Chris, you know, and uh, our doc. And he said, uh, I asked the, I asked a question, what is, what's your favorite thing about Eddie Brock? And Bizarre is like, man, you asked that one question. And now I know why they couldn't really answer it. He's like, Eddie Brock wasn't even in this season. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, we got to episode six now and no Eddie Brock. And it, it, it was kind of a bummer. You know, I always, I'm, I'm up for new ideas and new avenues to pursue these stories and these characters, but it does get, it's a little, it's a little bit of a bummer, you know, cause I, I do like Eddie and I wanted to, I like the version of Eddie they had on the show in the beginning, but I guess he's still stuck in that coma somewhere, which is which is a shame. And he'll never rebond with the suit because all the symbiotes apparently were wiped out. So definitely a different universe, that's for sure. And that's fine. You know, I, I don't mind that uh, to a degree. But um, when I just look back at the show, I'm like, man, like there's I felt like there was some missed opportunities here. But also, like I said, I don't know what they were allowed to do and not do. You know, I don't know because sometimes that does happen. I've worked on TV shows where they go, you can't use this character. Or you can't say this or you can't do that. And you're just like why not? <laughs> you know, I think, uh, the Batman, uh, that cartoon that I really love, it's like the version of Batman after the Kevin Conroy version. Um, in that one, they weren't allowed to use Ra's al Ghul, uh, Ra's al Ghul, uh, Scarecrow and someone else. And I think that was because they were in the Batman Begins movie. So Warner Brothers didn't want them in two, you know, so sometimes that happens and you're like, what? Like, it doesn't make any sense. You own the characters, let them, you know, be. And, they just wouldn't let it happen. So, uh, so yeah, you never know what happens when it comes to behind the scenes stuff. But I'm sure everyone did their best. The overall, my overall rating of this season, this episode, I would probably give like a maybe a three out of five. And the whole season, I would probably give a three out of five. Like I'm definitely critical of it. I, I didn't love every episode, um, and I didn't feel like every episode had a purpose. Like as far as like building the characters or structuring, you know, something like. I feel like if you have a plan, like I heard early on in that panel, like I was about to say, that everyone said, oh, it was hard to, to structure six one-hour episodes as opposed to, you know, uh, 20 half-hour episodes. And to me, I don't see what the problem was. Like, again, I don't, I wasn't in the room. I don't know. I don't see things from their perspective. But to come up with six one-hour episodes doesn't seem any different than it, 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 it maybe changes how you plan it, but it, it shouldn't plan how you, uh, it shouldn't change how you write and I felt like some of these episodes were just, I don't know, like it felt like hopefulness, you know, like, oh, let's do this swarm story so we can set it up and tie it to Miles so that way we could build that up for a, a future season. And it's like, well, what if we don't get a future season? It's one of those things where I always talk about, like, make this first and then if it's successful, go on to the next one. And that was one of those things where it felt like they left a lot of breadcrumbs open to maybe do something in a fourth season. And it's like, well, if you don't, know for sure that you're ever going to get a fourth season come you know make tell a, a solid story and if you're going to do a season called maximum venom make every episode symbiote related and and matter to that story um and that and three were and three weren't i would argue that two kind of fits in because that's the one where they're trying to set up peter as a leader but four and five just felt like more like side quest stuff that really didn't need to be there and i would have rather those have been little shorts that they put up on youtube uh where they fight swarm and you know, I guess Goblin in episode five had the symbiote too, and they did that whole Kirk Connors thing. But again, it's just like, there was so so much drama. It was like, oh, this person's in charge of school, then this person, then this person, and they're a villain, and they're a villain, and they have a symbiote, and they have a symbiote. And it's, it was just like too much. It was just like, for six episodes, it's just too much. If you dragged that out over 20 episodes, maybe it wouldn't have felt so, you know, packed in in the wrong way. But 
it, you know, it felt packed in in the wrong way. So yeah, three out of five for the season, three out of five for the episode. Let me know what you think. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? I wanted to make this a longer episode because we're on a milestone episode, I guess, 575. So I talked a little bit longer, got a little long-winded, but I, I wanted to just share all my thoughts and just kind of ramble and rant about everything and go over stuff and, and talk things out in my, you know, out loud and in my head to a degree and uh, and with my symbiote, you know, and, uh, and we just kind of go through this episode because there was a lot to unpack and there was a lot of cool things in it. Um, that I liked character-wise, like with Grady and Mary Jane. I'm, I was great to see those characters. Again, characters I, I didn't, you know, I, of course I love Mary Jane, but Grady was a character I didn't think I was going to like, but I actually he ended up being one of my favorite newest additions to the show, uh, so much so that I felt like some of the other characters on the on the team, they, they could have given them more to do. Like, they were like, they, they tried to do that with, oh, Jackal's here, so we got a Gwen with her uncle thing, and then we have, uh, you know, Aranya's sister, or what, oh, I keep blanking on her name, sorry. Um, I'm sure I'm butchering that. Like, I thought she was Aranya, but I'm, I'm, I'm now, I, I, I don't know why that's a blind spot for me, but my mind can't connect that dot. But I, when her sister showed up, so they did that episode where it was like, they tried to make them important to the story by bringing in their relatives, but that, it was like, that was it. It was very surface level involvement. And, and I, that may work, you know, obviously for kids on a kid show, it's not too deep. It's not, it won't go over their heads and stuff. They can understand it. But at the same time, it's kind of like, it just, I don't know. It, it didn't pull those characters to the full, you know, to the forefront. And I would have liked to seen those characters be in the forefront during uh, a symbiote storyline, especially when there's toys out there with Gwenum and Miles symbiote, and it's like okay, but they're not in the show. Like they don't they don't get turned into symbiotes. I don't remember them being. Maybe they were briefly in um in the uh, what you call it episode, the third episode, maybe briefly, but like Captain America and Iron Man were. But I don't know if I remember them being symbiotes, or if they were, they were. It was very brief, but it's just one of those things where I'm like, yeah, more. Like you know, I I want more because. I'm a symbiote fan and a Venom fan, and we do this show, obviously, so I want more Venom, um, but I was a little let down in that regard. But otherwise, not bad. You know, um, I, I like the show overall. Like, You know, I'm like f a little over 50% on it, like 60, 65%, um, so which I guess would be a fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes maybe. Um, but I, I didn't hate it. You know, I think there's a lot of haters of this show out there, and I understand that it's for kids, it's for a younger audience, and there are some things thrown in there maybe for us older people that watch it, but it's not really targeted for us. So it, it's not really geared towards me. I can still enjoy things that aren't geared towards me, sure. Um, you know, like romantic comedies, I would say, aren't geared towards me, but I still like them. And, uh, you know, sometimes, like, if they're done really well. And this was just one of those things where I'm like, it's not geared towards me, and it, it was just done, like, pretty well. You know, not great, but I don't hate it. I'm not a hater of this show. And uh, and I do love the people that worked on it and the people that have, you know, Chris and Doc, uh, or Chris, Doc, Wyatt, and Kevin Burt, who have brought a lot to this channel as far as interviews go and just um, support and things like that. Like that means a lot to me because those guys don't have to do that, you know, and, and me being critical of their work, they don't have to listen and they do. And it, it's, it means a lot. Like they're, they're really awesome guys. And I can't wait to see what they work on next because I will definitely support it. And I hope you guys too. So let me know if you agree with me, disagree with me. Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Um, but that's it for me. I'm going to do another episode coming up next, but it's since I talked so much in this episode, I think the next episode will be just gameplay footage of Marvel Future Fight and no talking from me at all. Um, so I'll try to work on that today as well. So thank you guys so much. See you in the future. Peace.